There are four components. The first component, since I'm the first to present, I will uh, go over. I know everyone knows what LIDAR is, but I will do a brief summary of the technology. And then I will present the environment, 2012 to 2016. You remember uh, the difficult traje trajectory that was uh, uh that was followed uh, and then we'll look at 2016 to 2022 and then uh, my colleague will continue with the uh, the uh, spin-offs for forestry and others so the technology lidar technology what you must know is that we're talking about uh, airborne lidar so it's uh, on a plane And the strength of this tool is the possibility that it can go look through the forest canopy. If it couldn't, it would be less interesting. What's interesting about this technology is it can go look right through the forest cover. When I was talking about uh, cloud points, this is what it looks like. So these are this is raw data, and these information clouds with specialized tools, we can classify them. And what we see here is a class of vegetation, and then we have the ground. So first return is often vegetation, and then second return is often associated to the terrain or the ground. So the interest and the difficulty, uh, earlier I was talking about that, it's the capacity of this tool to generate uh, digital models of the ground, of the field, and these models, they offer the largest amount of opportunities for uh, return benefits. And what I wanted to say is that an argument, a very strong argument, it's, a, it's an investment, but it can be... Um, an investment, it can be looked at uh, over 35,000 years. With uh, global warning, we're going to gain another 10,000 years. So we can look at this investment over many, many years. So returns uh, that we can look at, we can look at the uh, surface digital model. We can see the trees are at 320 meters. We can associate the MNT minus the MNS. So the height of the canopy, we can uh, figure out the height of the ca canopy and the height of each stem. What I want to give you as a main takeaway point is that uh, airborne photography, yes, it's necessary if you want to have a, a, a picture of a Uh, swamp LIDAR LIDAR can tell us that it's a plane but if you want to see if it's a swamp well uh, airborne photography is still very important so the main idea it's like if you um, shaved the entire uh, vegetation so you can see what's underneath the vegetation. It's important to have that information uh, in uh, the deciduous, for deciduous trees because we want to have an idea of the material we need for road construction and uh, this is important for digital uh, models of terrain. So with uh, airborne photography and with the 3D photography, we can do a lot of things. The canopy gives us a lot more information. In forestry, we have uh, cliffs that we call broken. So for uh, building roads, we'll be able to detail this information quite easily. So these are elements that we'll see uh, a little further in a more complete manner. Here, I'm showing you an example of the Maurice Park, the National Maurice Park. Perhaps some of you recognize the area. It's a concrete example of the benefits. 
When we presented the park, the park had uh, participated in the Marisi project, and they discovered structures here that you see in the red square. These are these are structures uh, of uh, wood floating, the parallel lines. So those were wood floating lines. At the beginning of the century, uh, there was wood floating up until the 40s in Mauricy and even in the south of the province. So they would make small dams and then they would bring the wood uh, to the dams and then the water would go down to the factories. So this is what we see here. These were dams for wood floating. So we were very, they were very happy to discover these elements. And the other element they discovered were uh, old forest roads. So these are things that are impossible to detect with uh, aerial photography. Another element is the height of the forest cover. With our experts in interpretation, we can bring out different elements. This data is easy to work with. Uh, we have easy to understand symbols here in blue and red. You see white pines, uh, stands of about 30 meters. So we're able to target those areas. And associated to these heights, we'll see it with the concrete examples. I'm, I'm staying easily, but it might not be that easy, but uh, we can build models and we can figure out the volumes in cubic meters and we can get uh, different information. The environment from 2012 to now, to the present, the first acquisition, acquisitions that were made were in 2007. And as of 2011, we have the regional uh, acquisitions sector. There's been an increase, an exponential increase. At that time, the needs and the solutions were dispersed, and there were many all-included solutions. There were certain regions that would take eight points, and others would take one point. Others would take uh, four points with leaves. And there was not necessarily uh, collaboration, and uh, these people wouldn't necessarily consult each other. So the uh, Department of Forest and Parks uh, started acting in this sector as of 2012. And the price to pay is that we had to regroup people around a table and we had to discuss a partnership. Uh, but the fact that we made large acquisitions like that, it reduced the costs by 75%. To have 35,000 uh, square kilometers, they're going to charge less for small blocks that they're going to do in uh, a few weeks. So we can get lower prices. We also acquired expertise. We worked very hard. We associated uh, ourselves with uh, industry leaders in the forestry sector. And that allowed us to uh, product, uh, to produce derivative, derived products. And that was a success. It really changed uh, the situation. We have uh, derived products that Marc Olivier is, gonna, uh, are, are, is going to present later. And earlier I was talking about changes in forestry. Well, it's a very conservative environment, uh, and we need uh, people that can manage these changes. So there was a consolidation with the government officials, and we overcame uh, many hurdles together, and that allowed us to put together an analysis of the gains. Sébastien Lacroix, myself, and Simon Rizzo, who's here in the room, and other actors that Sébastien will present to you later. 
So pertaining to the acquisitions, in 2013, 12,000 square kilometers, 15,000 in 2014, 50,000 in 2015, and 2016 we did 70,000 square kilometers. So you can understand that 70,000 square kilometers is a lot, and we think that might be our maximum uh, capacity for those who offer their services for this kind of work. So perhaps this is uh, an opportunity to exchange with you to see what your opinion is on this subject. 70,000, that's a lot. Up until now, everything was done with financial, financial partners, with the Government of Canada and others, but perhaps it will change with the uh, new financing and Mr. Briza. What we see here, the map, it's 200,000 square kilometers that we have already covered in Quebec. We have already covered it, or it is under contract. So you have uh, the zones that are uh, have already been acquired by the provincial project and other regions of Quebec, the, Ministry, the Department of Transportation. We put everything together, and that's what we see in blue here in 2016, 2017, with a new initiative uh, on uh, Côte Nord region. We almost did the entire code now. That's what we see in orange. And the contract has been signed for, signed for the region of Quebec. So that's an acquisition that we'd like to do this summer. So the 500,000 square kilometers, that's the part uh, that we are targeting for uh, uh, Quebec. So if we look at the action plan for 2016 to 2022, uh, it's related to what Mr. Brizard was explaining. As he was saying, there's a financial... Uh, the government is uh, financing part, uh, and we'd like to get this uh, 500,000 square kilometers covered. And we'd like to maximize the returns for forestry and other activity sectors. When Sebastian will, Sebastian will come up, he will explain for the other sectors. To attain these objectives, we have three components. The first component is an acquisition component. We'd like to also develop uh, derived products and uh, have a transfer of expertise. The first component, acquisition. We'd like to do 70,000 square kilometers per year until 2021-2022. Uh, we like to follow a calendar of acquisition. We have a calendar, an agenda. Uh, we have uh, forestry mapping, and uh, according to our uh, forest inventory. So we'd like to follow our calendar, and we'd like to advance with the calendar, uh, region by region. Why 80%? Is because I... I was saying, yes, but uh, next year we, we need certain data. So 70,000, there will be a, a 20% that will decrease as the calendar goes along. You'll understand later. I'm going to show you a visual example. So we're leaving the possibility to have sporadic acquisitions annually so that we can uh, answer uh, pressing needs. So it's important to not to uh, overwork our partners, to give them too much work. We're expecting the 80 and the 20 percent of acquisitions. We'd like it to be uh, coherent and be able to integrate it into the calendar. When we, when we go back, we don't want to redo things that we've already done. We have to define how we're going to acquire our acquisitions. So this is the calendar that we have for the 80% of inventory, region by region, and it's following the calendar of the forest inventory. What's in blue has already been acquired. Uh, orange is 2016-2017. So in 2016-2017, we'd like to do a small percentage of the Abitibi-Témiscamingue area. 
then, 2018, we'd like to go in the area of Montreal and Maurice Boisfrain. 2019, Saguenay-Lac-Saint-Jean area. And then we'd like to go into northern Quebec, 2020, the north of Quebec, and uh, then uh, Bois saint laurent and uh, Gaspésie regions. So this is the calendar. Our goal is to be able to follow the uh, forest uh, forest uh, inventory to optimize uh, volume calculation. Earlier I was talking about the 20%, so con- in, in a concrete manner, this is what it's going to look like. We're going to make new a- acquisitions, and then slowly there will be no new acquisitions. In 2019, we will have done a large part of the operations that we w- that we had scheduled. Next, we have a component of developing uh, derived products. We have three of them here. So we have basic derived products, so the models of the height of the canopy, height of the trees, uh, digital terrain models, and uh, uh, shaded relief uh, digital models. So that allows us to interpret the data of slopes and slopes. So those are the four uh, derived products. Then we have operability operative derived products. So these will be uh, done internally and uh, on and by contract. So these are layers uh, that support the forestry operations. And then we will have derived dendometric products. So Martin Riopel tomorrow morning will present his models, statistic models, that uh, support these steps. So we're in the final phase of developing these. Uh, we have uh, different pilot projects with different areas, different regions, and the, we're in the last stages of development. So now, um, the basic uh, derived products how we're going to disseminate this information. In 2016, open data. We're very careful about the finalization of all this, but what I can say right now is the intention that we have is that we'd like to put it on a web platform uh, for the uh, basic derived products. We have the intention to have open data so this is for special targeted, um, targeted uh, clients, but we're developing this whole idea right now. We have Dendo metric uh, products, derived products, and the uh, decimation uh, models are being worked on right now. So we have an um, expertise transfer component We have the uh, shaded uh, relief models. We have covered regions. We don't just uh, use the uh, cloud of points. We uh, look at the data. We show people how to use it. Often we go in the field to uh, encourage people to use the data. There's training. And we continue with research and development. It's a good tool to work with. So the next steps uh, is integration into the uh, forest inventory. So I'd like to invite you to go see the kiosks that are downstairs. Um, You'll see how it's all going to be implemented into the uh, forest inventories, the uh, ecological variables, and the uh, uh, and how we're going to make better the uh, dendrometric variables. So we have an open approach. We're very open to your feedback uh, from the industry, from other uh, uh, 
other people uh, to, in order to better our offer of services. Now I'm going to let uh, Sébastien Lacroix to come up. He's a forestry engineer. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Antoine. I'm very happy to be here in front of you to tell you about LIDAR technology. It's very motivating to have such a full room. We've worked on several things over the past two or three years, and to be able to present it is very motivating, very encouraging. Before continuing and letting others that uh, work with this uh, technology uh, talk to you, we wanted to, uh, without going into extreme details, we wanted to introduce uh, the possible gains that are available. Perhaps you are wondering why someone from the Marketing Bureau would uh, come and talk to you about LiDAR technology? What could I tell you about LiDAR? I sell wood. Well, yes, we use LiDAR technology to sell uh, different uh, sectors, to promote different sectors. We have a lot of positive comments from people who work with this technology on, in the field. But that's not what I'm going to talk to you about today. I'm going to talk to you not about sales, but within the uh, Marketing Bureau, we have uh, financial aspects, the government in, uh, investments. We help uh, the teams to um, promote different projects. You probably... You probably have guessed that in the provincial budget, there is a positive aspect, very positive aspect, and uh, we have gone forth with great conviction. And this is why I'm here. Before looking at the gains and the spin offs, why so much information put on uh, forest information? Well, in any activity, sector act of activity, here we're talking about forestry, but it could be any other uh, sector. Uh, information is the basis. It's going to, what's going to make or break the forest industry, where we have uh, heterogeneous uh, forests, we have different issues, we're sensitive to the uh, quality of the information that we work with for many years, be it the industry, the government, uh, the federal, the provincial government, uh, universities, all of these actors work to, have been working to uh, improve the available information. All the people from the industry um, tell us, listen, when I started working in the forest industry, we would go into the woods and look at what was available. And these people have gone through major changes because uh, the sources of information are very varied now. Now we have LiDAR technology. And even now we can get internal information about the stems, about the uh, tree trunks. So why are we here? Why so much money and time invested? Mr. Brissard uh, told you a little bit about it, but it's not a secret for anyone. The chain of, of information, the very first information that's at the base of the chain is forest inventory. And that information has an impact on many, many decisions on the cost and on the value of the product. So it's no secret. I could have talked about any other sector of activities and it would be the same situation. The information has a direct impact on uh, the performance of, uh, of our products. Now that we know why we're trying to improve the information that's available, I'm going to take some time to explain to you the approach that we use. 
to get uh, financing. And uh, that will allow a provincial acquisition. In 2013, we started a uh, great collaboration. I'm not going to name all the, the actors, but uh, there are different departments that uh, contributed. There was a study that was done over two years. Seven departments were involved, and the objective was simple, and everyone knew that uh, uh, it was quite simple. It's the acquisition of a provincial LIDAR, LIDAR system. So let's move on to the conclusions. If you're interested, the report is available. It's uh, open information. So when we did the study... When we started, several departments were doing LIDAR acquisition, and we're using that information in their uh, everyday activity. It was not just the Department of Forest that used that information. A whole lot of departments, uh, provincial departments, you'll see the list. The individual gains of the departments did not offset the LIDAR acquisition costs. People were doing small patches of acquisitions at high cost, and each of the individual benefits for each of the government departments did not allow us to cover the whole cost. But when we put together the gains, uh, between several departments, and when we do acquisition on relatively sizable uh, patches, then the benefits are shared more equally. We show you figures in square kilometers here. It, uh, no, but the important thing is to find out that the, the, the benefits and, uh, are higher than the costs. There's also another part. It has an impact on forest activities in the industry, as, so it's not just used by uh, government departments, those data. So the impact on the various departments, here are the main departments that were surveyed. Uh, of course, we, we did our survey broad, in a more broad based manner. Some of departments did not use LIDAR information, so they didn't answer. What we have to remember is that several departments use it. Uh, public security, energy, natural resources, mines, agriculture. But the main gain when the survey was done was with forests. That's where uh, the benefits were the highest. And maybe I'll make you change at the next slide. I'll present to you another study elsewhere in the world. But in Quebec, that was the situation when we did the survey. But for the forest industry now, we approached them. We conducted a similar approach. Other studies were done by FP Innovation, for example. Some surveys were done internally by some businesses. We did a study in Boreal Forest, and it led us to a potential savings of about $2 per cubic meter. $2 per cubic meter is better than dollars per square kilometer for, for in the industry. In terms of savings and value added, and I'm going to tell you what the industry told me when they gave me the planning data. What he wants me to tell you is that this is a variable impact. Oh, we came up with a figure of $2 per square meter, but it changes depending on the type of forests. If you are in a gray pine plateau, which is very flat, no terrain problems, uh, then the impact is lower. But if you are in a more difficult site, then the impact will be greater. That's one thing. Site conditions, slopes, labor skills. Each developer, each person doing forest planning, they don't always have the same skills. And related information available. Where are we starting from? Do we start with very imprecise information, or do we start with information which is already pretty uh, well detailed and useful? So the potential gain or saving for the industry depends on all these variables. But the important thing is not that you keep in mind this $2 per square per cubic meter and that's it. That's what I put on my budget sheet. The important thing is to understand that there is some form of potential saving. You'll see what the industrial people are doing, what the department makes available to them, and you'll be able to say, okay, for me, it will be $1 per cubic meter, or it will be $3 per cubic meter. Uh, let me get out now a little bit of forestry. We're not in Quebec anymore. Let's go to the United States. A similar study was conducted, but on a much larger scale was conducted. That study 
in the U.S. is available on the net, so I don't want to get into too many details. 34 federal agencies in 50 states took part in that study. The fourth sector is 10th in terms of the gains out of 27 sectors of activity. So, significant. Okay, the forest sectors has interesting gains, but they're not the first. There are In the U.S., there are nine other sectors of activity where they have more important gains. And here, I uh, maybe that will shock you, that will make you stand on your chair, but the potential gains that they provided in that study are $13 billion annually in U.S. dollars annually. $13 billion annually. That's the conclusion of the study. That was commissioned by the U.S. government. I just wanted to open the door. Now, okay, let's go back to the forest sector now, which we're most interested in. The LIDAR cover, we think that the, what is proposed today, that LIDAR coverage will bring significant changes on ways people do things in forestry. And here I took it directly from the mouth of people who use it. What they're telling us is once you've tasted that, you don't want to go back anymore. And that's the general feeling of that people have. That's the signal we get. And when, once they have seen and used that, they say, no, I, I won't come back to traditional maps. Don't show that to me. It's a measure that is not very vulnerable in the U.S. trade issue, so it encourages competitiveness for Quebec without uh, creating anger in the, on the American side. So uh, sustainable, sustainable is sustainable measure uh, for to, until the next glaciation. So, so it's very sustainable. Uh, as a conclusion, with the 2016 budget, the Quebec government confirmed its strong support for that technology by deciding to invest to push Quebec ahead. Uh, Antoine talked to you about the fact that there will be derived products to facilitate their use. You'll see presentations about these derived products. Now what I wanted to throw at you is are you ready to get involved with us in this new adventure? We believe in this. We think there is something interesting underneath all that. That's what I had to say. Uh, any questions or comments? And that's the end of my presentation.